Hey guys, Jason here from the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode four of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit more about content types, and then we're going to create one of our own. So as I said before, content types group like pieces of content together. Now to dive into what this means a little bit, each piece of content that we create of this given type will share the same fields and they'll share the same usefulness. So for example, we're going to be creating a homepage slider content type, and this is going to display a slideshow on the front page of our website. Now each slide is going to share the same fields. They're all going to have an image field and they're all going to have a link field that will take you to some other page within the website. Now since these pieces of content all share the same purpose and the same fields, it makes more sense to group them together into a specific type. So why don't we go ahead and get started in creating this content type. To do that we come up here to structure content types, and we're going to click add content type. Now you're going to be displayed with a form, and this form is going to ask you to give your content type a name, which we are going to call ours a homepage slider, and a description. And the description is just kind of so that you or other users on the website get an idea of what this content type is used for. So we'll just say something like content of this type will be displayed on the home page slider. Nothing too long, nothing too in depth, just something quick and brief that lets the user of the site know what the content is for. And this is a little bit more important when you, the person building the site, isn't the person adding the content because you can end up with quite a few content types by the end of your website creation and if you don't tell people what they do or name them properly, it can get really confusing. Now down here on the left hand side, you're going to see some options similar to the ones that we had when we created our basic page. And that's because these are the global options for this content type. Now we can either leave them as is and then adjust them every time we create a piece of this content or we can adjust them globally and not have to worry about them when we create individual pieces of content. So for example, we don't want it to be promoted to the front page anymore, so we're going to uncheck that because that's not really going to do anything since we overrode Dru Drupal's default front page. Under the display settings, we don't need it to display the author or the date that it was published, so we'll uncheck that. And we definitely don't need the comments on this piece of content because people aren't actually going to be going to the node of this piece of content. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then when it comes to the menu, we also don't need these nodes for any reason to be in any of our Drupal menus, so we're going to go ahead and turn that off. We'll click Save and Add Fields. Now this is where we specify each individual um, field type that's going to be within this piece of content. So for example, do we want an image upload field? Do we need the link field? Both of those we do need for this particular content type. Now the body field is inserted by default from Drupal. I always like to delete it because this machine name here um, will print out in the CSS and when you go to theme it you'll have multiple fields named body and they'll all share the same CSS class so I like to delete it and then change that machine name to be something a little more custom so that when it prints out in the CSS I have a little bit more control over it. Now when it comes to the home page slider content type we don't need it at all so it's okay to just get rid of it. The first thing we are going to need though is an image field. So from the field types we're going to go ahead and select image. Now the widget type, certain uh, field types have different input methods. Um, the image field only has one and we'll cover those a little bit more as we add those particular field types. So for now don't worry about that, just add an image. 
Now the field name is what's going to be displayed on the form when you add this piece of content. So if you name it something arbitrary, it's going to be really confusing as to what this field is used for. So we're just going to name ours image, which makes sense because we're uploading an image field. And then we're going to click edit here on the machine name, and we're going to alter this slightly so that when it prints out in the CSS as a class or in the HTML as a class, it'll be unique to itself. So I'm just going to add slider underscore. And that's that's kind of my methodology to just name name it the uh, the content type underscore whatever the field name is. Now you can only use underscores and lowercase letters in the machine names and it'll tell you that right under underneath it here and numbers. Um, otherwise it's not going to let you add this field because the machine name is incorrect. So we're going to go ahead and click save and we're going to be displayed with yet another screen here and it's going to ask us for the upload destination. Um, right now, public is the only option that we have, but if we had files that we were uploading that we only wanted certain people to be able to access, we could set up a private file system, and we might do that later on in the series just so that you understand how to set up those private file systems. Um, but for the image, we're okay with just leaving it public. Now, the default image option is for if someone creates a, a homepage slider content, um, and they don't upload an image, which defeats the whole purpose of having a slideshow, we can set up a default image that will automatically be uploaded. In this case, we're not going to worry about that, so we're just going to click Save Field Settings. We're going to get one more page of options here, and this is going to give us like help text here, which um, is just a small description that ends up under the field that lets the user know what it's for. Um, we're just going to type in to upload image to slideshow just so you can see what that does. Here we get the default image option yet again. I don't know why it's on both pages, but for some reason they felt like they needed to include it on both. Um, the allowed file extensions, as you can see here, are like .png, uh, .jpeg. Um, if you need to add a new file extension to this list, you just separate it with a comma and uh, leave off the period. Uh, and that will allow for a new file extension. If we tried to upload a .doc file into this particular field, Drupal would throw an error and tell us that that's not a valid file for this field. Um, so that's kind of what this is all for here. The file directory is if you would like to store these images on another directory within Drupal for any reason. We don't really need to do that, so we're going to leave that blank. Um, the image maximum and minimum uh, resolutions, we will come back in here and mess with these later when we get more towards the theming aspect of things. Um, because if we set up an image size and an image style, which we'll definitely be covering in much greater detail later on, um, that says this image will resize itself to, let's say, 960 by 400, well, we don't want somebody uploading an image that's 10 by 10 and then having that blown way up to 960 by 400. It's going to look terrible. So we can set minimum width and height resolutions on these fields so that people can't upload images that are too small. We can also do the same for images that might be too large because we don't necessarily want somebody uploading an image that's 5,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. That's going to take forever to load. So we can set maximum and minimum constraints on these image fields so that people have to kind of fall into the allowed region there to upload an image. This is great when you're doing a production site for a client of yours because a lot of times they don't have the kind of web knowledge that, that you may have and they may upload huge images or images that are way too small and it's going to make the end result of the website not look so good or perform as well. And this lets you set constraints that they have to, to find themselves in in order to upload an image. Um, down here underneath that is the alt and title tags. We will enable both of those for SEO pur purposes. That's search engine optimization and we'll show you that when we get there. Um, 
Right below it is the number of values. This is the amount of images or this particular field that they can upload at a given time. So if we set this to unlimited, then they can upload four or five, six images to this given field. Um, we'll do that later on because there's some certain ways that we can theme things up and make things look by doing this. But for the home page slider, we only want them to be able to upload one image. So go ahead and click Save Settings. And that's it. We've created an image field for our home page slider. Now, the next thing that we need to do is create a link field for our home page slider. Now, the thing is, link is not a default Drupal option. We need to go out onto the web and find the, the link uh, module, download it, and then we can use the link module here in our field settings. So the, we're going to head on over to Google here and we are going to type in Drupal link and it should be this first one that pops up. So just like we've installed modules before, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and we are going to download this green alpha release or green stable release. I'm sorry. Um, once that's downloaded, we need to head over to our downloads section, wherever you have that downloading on your computer and go ahead and extract that. From there, we need to move into the back end of our website. Go to sites, all and modules and just drag and drop link on in there. Now, when we come back over to our Drupal site, we can click the modules tab and you'll see at the bottom here, we have a new section added for the link field. Um, and it just defines a simple link field type. So we'll turn that on, click save configurations. Close that down and let Drupal refresh itself. All right, we're going to go back up to structure content types. And instead of adding a new content type, we're going to come down to the home page slider and click manage fields. This will get us back to where we were when we added the image field in. So now if we click, uh, click the field type drop down, you'll see that link is an option. So we can go ahead and click that. There are no other widget options for link. We can name our field, edit the machine name, and click Save. Now this process is going to be very similar. You can see this one, however, doesn't have any field settings, so we'll click Save. Um, and now we're into the, the larger field settings form here. Uh, the one thing that we do want to do for this, because we don't just want the URL printing out on our homepage slider, that looks terrible. We want them to type in a title and then the path to wherever they want to go. And then we will take that title and rewrite that title to be the link field itself. So we want to make sure that we require that title. Otherwise, we're just going to end up with these terrible looking URLs on our homepage slider, and we definitely don't want to do that. Um, we're just going to keep scrolling on down. You can read through these at your own time. They're kind of self-explanatory, and there are a lot of description fields at the bottom if you don't know what it does. Um, here at the default value, you can once again, just like we could upload a default image, you can insert a default link. And you'll see again that there is the number of values. We only want it to be one. So when you create a homepage slider piece of content, you'll get to upload one image and one link. And that's it. We've created a content type um, for our homepage slider. Let's go ahead and test it out. I don't know if I have any images on my computer as of right now that will work, but we will find out. So we need to go up to content, add content, and what we're going to do is add a home page slider. And now you can see that we're presented with a form that matches exactly to what we told that content type to be. We have an image field, we have a link field, 
and all of these default settings down here on the side are done. Um, so let's give it a name. We're just going to call it slide one. And we need to choose an image. And like I said, I'm not sure if I have one, so I'm just going to head over to Google and I'm going to do a quick stock photo search here. And we are just going to grab the first thing that we find here. Um, view original. Obviously, you're going to want to choose something that's a little more oriented to your website. But um, I'm just going to grab this here and save it to the desktop. And there we go. So now I can click choose file. Head on over to my desktop and we can upload that file. All right, here's something else we need to discuss. By default, Drupal only allows you to upload images that are two megabytes or smaller. Um, and the reason is it's just another server load file size thing that they don't want you to overload their server. So real quick here, we are going to do another stock photo search here. Um, and we're just going to grab something really small. Let's see if that guy is smaller or not. Yeah, that one looks like it should work. Alrighty, sorry about that. So now we can choose our file and upload it. We will cover in future tutorials how to increase this minimum file size, but I really do recommend that you not increase it over 10 or 15 megabytes or else you, you can potentially uh, start bogging down your web server. Um, so there it is. You'll get a little quick preview of what it looks like. And here are the alt text and the title text. Now, these are not things that you will see unless, for instance, the alt text, when the image can't load up, it'll display this text. The uh, title text will display when you hover over the image. But it is a big SEO friendly thing because it does print out in the HTML. So we are going to just type in one stop for now. But you can type in things that have to do with what the image is, what the image's purpose is, things like that. And it'll help with your SEO a little bit. So our title, we are going to say learn more about who we are. And now we need to give it a URL, but the problem is we only have one page on our website. So we can't really send it to a page that doesn't exist yet. Um, there are two ways that we can just say link this to the front page and we'll come back and we'll modify these later so that they go to appropriate places on the website. But one way would be to add the name of the page path alias that we had created. The other way would be to use its node ID. But when you're linking to the front page, Drupal has a really nice built-in quick trick that you can do where you just type in front within these little carrots and that'll tell it to go right to the front page. So now we'll click save. Much like when we created our default home page, it will take you directly to your page. And you'll see that we have now an image that can be used for our slideshow and a link that should link us back over to the front page. Now, in the next tutorial, we're going to start delving into how to set up this slideshow. Um, and there's a couple other things that I might want to cover real quick before we get into that. But um, that should be the plan is to get this slideshow created, get it on our home page. Um, and then we can move on to the next topic. So if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the page, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of Practical Drupal Development.